Welcome to Take 5, your five-minute inspirational message from Solid Rock Drogheda. I'm Nick Park and I'm teaching a series of five-minute messages on how Jesus is in all the books of the Old Testament and we have now reached the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a great prophet. He preached uh, a great hope but he also endured a great grief because he was given the task of declaring to the nation of Judah that they were going to be conquered by the Babylonians and their temple was going to be destroyed. Everything that they held dear was going to be taken away from them. That was a, a message that he didn't take any joy in giving. It was a great grief to him. But he also had a great hope because he believed and he believed God that God would then restore the people to the land once again. Now, not only did he prophesy destruction, but Jeremiah also advocated surrender. Now, that was something that obviously was extremely unpopular politically. But in Jeremiah 38, he said, you know, the best thing you can do is surrender with, to the Babylonians and cooperate with them. And to get a sense of how unpopular this would have been, imagine if at the beginning of World War II, the Archbishop of Canterbury had preached a, a, a sermon, uh, maybe on the radio, and announced to the British nation that the best thing they could do was to surrender to the Germans. I mean, my goodness, he would have been put in prison for sure. And Jeremiah was put in prison. The miracle is that he wasn't actually killed for proclaiming such a message. But Jeremiah also declared hope. And when, with the uh, invasion of the Babylonians, the property prices collapsed and, and, and everything else, and everybody was just trying to get rid of property, he went and he bought some property. God told him to do that. that he, to, he did that as a sign that he had faith that they were coming back back to this land again. Otherwise, buying a piece of property in a land they were exiled from would be absolute nonsense. Now, Jeremiah was threatened with death, and uh, his response to that was that he was innocent. And he said in Jeremiah 26, ver verse 15, that if they killed him, it would bring the guilt of innocent blood on yourselves and on this city and on those who live in it. And that idea that killing an innocent man would bring guilt upon the city of Jerusalem and the people in it was one that then, that then uh, people held on to that idea through the years and it finds its full expression in the New Testament with the arrest and the uh, crucifixion of Jesus. Judas, whenever he had betrayed Jesus, in Matthew 27 verse 4, Judas said, I have sinned, I have betrayed innocent blood a very clear echoing of the words of Jeremiah. And then Pilate, of course, if you remember Pontius Pilate, you know, said, uh, I, I wash my hands of the blood of, of, this, of this man. And do you remember what the, uh, the chief priests got the people to shout out in Matthew 27, verses 24 and 25? Let his blood be on us and on our children. And that carries on into the book of Acts, where the apostles were arrested and they were put in prison and they were going to be tried the next day by the Sanhedrin, the Jewish council. But God dramatically and miraculously released them from prison. So the guards were still outside, but now the prison cell was empty and they're out preaching again. And uh, the chief priests are are baffled at this and angry at this that these people that they thought they had safely put in prison are outside again preaching the gospel and they said we gave you strict orders not to preach this stuff they said yet and this is acts 5 28 yet you have filled jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. And so this thing that Jeremiah said about the innocent, killing an innocent man would bring the guilt of innocent blood on the people and the, the leaders and their city and those who live in it. That found its fulfillment, not in the death of Jeremiah, but in the death of Jesus. And uh, here we clearly see it's you know that it's a, it's a it's a thread that runs through from Jeremiah through the Gospels into the Book of Acts. Uh, it's something I've very rarely heard anyone talking about, but it's definitely there. This picture of Jesus when he says, when Jeremiah says, "You would bring the guilt of innocent blood upon yourselves and on this city and on the, those who live in it," that found its fulfillment 
in Jesus Christ. God bless you today and uh, join us tomorrow for another Take 5, your five-minute inspirational message from Solid Rock Drogheda.